Welcome to the Vocal Dental Nurses with your hosts, Kate and Shelly, joined for this episode by the fantastic Reed. Hey, hey, lovely ladies. How are you doing? Good. Very well, thank you. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, welcome back to everybody out there. We have been uh, absent. We've taken some cheeky bit of annual leave and uh, been generally working. So we do apologize for our absence, but we are back with a passion. And you'll see that we've got the fantastic Shelley and the fantastic Ree. Hey. <laughs> and we're coming back just to chew the fat. Uh, about anything to do with dental nurses, how fantastic they are, uh, valued, not valued, pay, anything. Um, so I think today uh, we just had a little, little chat prior to coming online and we're actually going to talk about the them and us scenario. Now, this can take us in, in several directions and I'm sure we all know that there are some fantastic and very, very, very supportive clinicians, principals out there, and there's absolutely no question that um, all of us do work with these people. Like we've just actually named some people um, prior to coming on here, but we don't want to make them get too big headed. So we might not say their names now. Uh, and um, equally, um, unfortunately, we also know that uh, being a dental nurse can bring a different experience whereby you're, you're not valued. So never mind that you're not paid well and you don't get the time to do everything else. Unfortunately, we also know that um, you can have a day with no respect. Um, you're not treated very well. Um, I just shared with the girls just prior to coming on here, we are talking several years ago, but that said, there was um, a, a nurse that I used to work with and uh, in her nursing days, the clinician at the end of the day would remove their scrub top, would have a t-shirt underneath, but their scrub top and would just throw it on the floor and tell the nurse that that needs washing. Now, when when I told uh, Ray and Shelley that earlier, they both had um, the same reaction. Um, and it is a shame that that kind of behaviour, I'd like to think not to that extent, but it is still present, ladies. Would, would, would you agree in certain practices? Yeah, I think mm -hmm. so. Um, I saw a post, there's actually um, a Facebook group um, for dental nurses. I can't remember the exact name because I'm members of that many. Um, but there was a post just this week actually about what annoys you the most about your job. So of course, lots of people had put pay, um, lack of time, that sort of thing. But one thing that came up quite a lot was lack of respect from the clinician. Um, so I think it is something that still goes on. Um, mm. Thank goodness not at our practice. But yeah, I think especially the old school dentist, perhaps, um, there's still very much a divide there. Yeah. Which you can sort of understand from one perspective. But on the other, you know, because, you know, they're obviously highly qualified and all the rest of it. Um, but on the other hand, we also should be valued members of the team. You know, we have our own registration now. We have our own CPD to do. And like you said earlier, Kate, they can't work without us. They so certainly cannot. I think, you know, there needs to be. And also, who wants to spend eight hours a day being either not spoken to or spoken to in a tone that, I mean, that can't be nice for the dentists themselves either. Why not try and create a friendly atmosphere for the patients yeah. as well if they're coming in and they're 100%. nervous and there's all this tension in the surgery it's just not a good place to be it isn't and i mean it is key because the bottom line and this is how i was sort of saying it earlier to shelley it is so black and right white that massively qualified yes oh my goodness of course they are to do the the job that they do but that ground rule is they can't work without a dental nurse so, I mean, how much value does that, should that put on that individual? 
you know yeah. and it, it, it as you say my goodness you know imagine what the day would be like going into going into that every day yeah it's toxic. it'd be awful toxic it, yeah it is toxic it is it is for the relationship if you if it was one of your girlfriends telling you about oh in this relationship with this you know fella um this is how they make me feel this is the way they speak to me this is the way they treat me you'd be telling your girlfriend to get out of there not wealthy relationship so it's almost like well just because it's a work relationship yeah why should we be putting up with it any different and i'm like usually i'm in a real fortunate position where i work with a team who we are treated very fairly. The clinicians are amazing, just like your team, but I've worked in some... I've been in some questionable, questionable relationships with dentists, as in like yeah. toxic relationships. <laughs> and you just think, crikey. But I think a lot of that comes, as for me anyway, like a maturity side of things. Like when those, if I look back at the dentists that I worked with and those working relationships and where it was quite tense, I was probably really newly qualified and much younger because I'm like yeah. almost 40 now. So I'm like talking, I was 21, mm. 22, 23 when I was having those kind of work experiences where it was like what you described, Kate, like what your colleagues are. So I think it comes with, uh, you can hold your own a bit more when A, you're a bit older, you're a little bit yeah. experienced. They yeah. probably, yeah. the dentist, when I say they, so the dentist who's maybe having the worst day of his life, probably <laughs> he couldn't get away with treating me or speaking to me like that because I'm a bit yeah. older than the other nurses. Also, so I think it's it comes with a bit of gravitas from the the nurse as an individual as well. Like what the dentist feels like they can get away. I'm not saying it's right, yeah. but also yeah. maybe we're not experiencing that now. A because of the people that we're working with are great, so there's a really great working relationship there. But B because we're a bit older as well, they probably don't. No one would probably feel like they could get away with that. Throw their weight yeah. around, maybe. Absolutely, I think you're a hundred percent right, uh, right Reeve. And I think it comes with confidence and experience. I mean, again, Shelley, we, we just mentioned this morning that, you know, like you've just said, Rhi, actually, you know, somebody that's maybe 16, you know, coming into a new role, if they haven't got that experience and the confidence within that dental field, you know, it would be very, very hard for them. Um, but of course, I'm not saying that that doesn't happen to people when they are older and when they are more experienced, because unfortunately it does. But I think it's hard because I don't know how individuals can can get away with that, if, if that makes sense. It's, um, well, it's a hor horrible, horrible feeling for, for people. As you say, if it was any of our friends, you know, we'd be saying, well, you know, just pff, walk away, you know, don't put up with that. Yeah. But sometimes it's it's easier said than done, and it's a job for a lot of people. They have to put up with a lot because it's what pays their bill. And do you know what? They potentially don't know any different either. Yeah, yeah. You know? And I always think like if um, because I used to work with a dentist a long time ago, and I remember him. I was really new. I don't I don't even think I was qualified at this point. I think I was still a trainee. So this is how long ago it was. And I remember doing. I think there's some endo with him and he asked for a pair of tweezers i picked up a pair of tweezers because i think tweezers are tweezers not realizing there's a difference between locking tweezers and yeah. <laughs> at this point anyway handed him some tweezers they got flung back like across towards me like missed me and like scooted across like the work surface like really dramatic this pair of tweezers and um oh, i remember i was more i was like what do I do? Like, what did what did I do, and what do I do? And like, the patient's yeah. there, and like, he didn't speak to me for the rest of the endo treatment. <sighs> oh, like, did he still want a pair of tweezers? Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> like, it was just he didn't even apologize afterwards, or even acknowledge that that even happened. It was like it just didn't happen. Like he um, he looked wasn't what he wanted. Flung it across the room, carried on what he's doing. Like, I don't even think he realized what he did. And it's that. Mm. Would it make it better or right had he apologised or acknowledged mm. things he would have done? Do I think it's okay because he didn't realise he did it, so therefore he was just in the zone, stressful situation, couldn't find the canal or whatever was going on, so 
do you let that slide and it happen because he was in the zone and he didn't mean it? Or if he did mean it and apologised and did apologise, then is that okay too? It's that kind of like, I don't know what's right know. in these situations. Mm. So you just yeah. kind of put up and shut up and you don't say anything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a terrible situation to be in. I mean, I've it's echoed around with with dental nurses you know in my dental nursing days so we are talking some years ago um i can remember talking socially with people so if they said oh what do you do and you do i'm a dental nurse and many a times people would say oh so you just do Mm. and you know when you think that's the mindset of of the you know some of the general public uh peers but if you're that patient in that chair and you're seeing how the clinician is treating the nurse, does it come from that as well? You know, they're seeing that it's a dental nurse, they're not value, chuck that there. As a patient, you're probably going to actually perceive, I'm not saying you would, but you can see why a patient would perceive that as a worthless job and a dental nurse or what, you just do that, do you? So, you know, that knock-on effect of that um, kind of um, attitude within a within a uh, surgery would have a, you know, has a massive knock-on effect, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, much like you girls, you know, I, I was very, very lucky, really, in my nursing career that I worked with some fantastic clinicians, very supportive. Um, you know, there was a few, I, I certainly wouldn't have said to the extent that we're talking about, but they were more old school, if you can say that, but that was okay. So that them and us wasn't rude and it wasn't throwing things across. It really was, you know, Mr. So-and-so because that was old school, but yeah. there was none of that that horrible Rudeness. feeling. Or, yeah, yeah, no, there was nothing, nothing like that. But then I don't know, maybe it, if there was, maybe, you know, you just accept it. Uh, when you when you are younger I don't know it's horrible it's horrible I mean when you think that nurses generally aren't paid well and they still have to put up with things like that it is a wonder we're getting dental nurses wanting (laughs) or people wanting to be a dental nurse (laughs) well there there's not many coming through the door at the moment bless them and there's adverts out there everywhere so if if anybody is working with someone that is making them feel insignificant not valued bullied then check out indeed because the jobs out there at the moment and the pay is going up i mean i can see it myself so you know don't don't stay don't stay there and and be miserable you know we all we all have to go well most of us have to go to work and spend more time with these people than we spend with our own families and friends to be made to feel worthless it's just not acceptable Mm. so you know if that's going on at your place look out get out yeah 100 percent. and you that, sorry okay that feeling in in no no you're right oh, the, the feeling on a on a night before they go into work the next day they must be feeling you know sick anxious and but that's awful, then on the morning can you to imagine go. that's yeah. you know that's just it's not acceptable you know school's hard enough you, ha- you have to go to school and you know we all get name called or whatever but you don't expect that to carry on throughout the rest of your adult working life once school's done you leave that environment and it's it's time then for you to go off and flourish and you can choose to a certain extent who you work with and where you work and and now especially because nationwide the shortage of dental nurses just you know keep your eyes peeled and, and go to interviews go and get a different i mean the amount of people that we've interviewed over the years and they all say exactly the same the vibe when you come into our practice it's just a friendly atmosphere there's no tension it's just a good it's just a good vibe and that's, yeah. and that's how it should be yeah. and let's yeah. not echo what you've just said Shelley like there are so many dental nursing jobs on Indeed at the minute like yeah. our, mm. um, the company I work for we've got a careers page and there are so many dental nurses all or even like treatment coordinator roles for yeah. my dental nurses. Like, like you don't, there are, you know, if there are any dental nurses listen to this, who are, like Kenneth Shelley says, who are feeling really unsettled or undervalued. And it's not always about money. It's not always money. No. It's not no. always money. 
if you just feel like you just want to spread your wings a bit feel really supported really championed there are practices out there and it's not just mine it's not just Shelley's there are more mm -hmm. practices out there who are screaming for qualified dental nurses yeah um, just they just want to embrace you they want to nurture you they want to push yeah. you on, and there are practices out there um so it's not just mine and Shelley's practice who, who are like it's with this isn't unique if you're in a practice where you're feeling really unsettled then there's places that will absolutely bite your hand off if you qualify yeah not every not everywhere is like that and i think it must you know it's a horrible feeling for those that are within a practice with any one or more of the things we've just uh, mentioned because when you're in that place i would imagine it's very very hard to actually know that there is something else out there because you are stuck in that rut and yeah. that's all you know and the girls are right there are so many fantastic and wonderful practices fantastic and wonderful clinicians the team so you know get get out there because it, it's not just clinicians that that treat the nurses like that you know we are talking management as well and it's it's a terrible terrible shame when it runs through a practice and it has a massive thing uh, you know impact within the practice with with the team and i mean if we do talk money if we're gonna you know go close to the to the button with it let's let's not forget that a clinician can't work without a nurse like we've just said so if they can't work without a nurse that means they haven't got that income so i know that's quite black and white but it's 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 a true fact but yeah my goodness there are so many opportunities i'm really sorry girls someone's right there. knocking at my door <laughs> This is like actually this could be my son arriving home, so I'm gonna have to swerve and duck out. I really I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> Honestly, it just real. doesn't end, does it? You're either at work or there's just no there's no switch on. I'm Go really on. sorry, Go ladies. Be mum. Go be Take mum. care. Thank have you. a good weekend. Bye, Bye all. Bye. Take Bye. care. Bye. <laughs> oh, you see, multiple roles, Ray. Multiple yeah. roles. <laughs> I mean, you know you're talking about not um, kind of in a place where you're not feeling valid or that it can be really toxic. It made me think about, so places like the British Association, British Association of Dental Nurses, so the BADN, they're there to support dental nurses. So sometimes we can feel really alone as nurses. Like you say, sometimes it might not be the clinician that it's it, there's friction sometimes it can come from management like from your past manager or the other's team and you can feel really alone but there are like Shelley said there's groups on Facebook of like dental nurses supporting each other which are really good you've got the British Association for Dental Nurses as well they they've been going since 1947 and they purely <laughs> champion dental nurses and um so and I'm really heavily involved with them I'm one of their biggest champions their biggest cheerleader so there, there is support out there. It doesn't just yeah. stop at your practice manager or your lead nurse or your dentist. There's a whole massive world of dental nurses um, out there. And we just want to cheer each other on. Yeah, 100%. And exactly, I, I want to make it very, very clear. We started with saying uh, the way clinicians treat. I mean, that's a different kettle of fish. These are all different ways because then, yes, you move on and there's the way that um, nurses get treated by the practice managers and, as you say, by their peers, so by their lead nurse, by the head nurse, by the... So it, it's all... Everything's in there. But as you say, Re, there is support out there. Um, and more than anything, you know, do look because if you are that unhappy it's such a shame because dental nurses are, are golden nuggets they really really are the unsung heroes which is what i said um when we first started doing these little chats um so yeah there are there is help out there and it's such a shame because most dental nurses that i meet i've got to say are so enthusiastic mm -hmm. you know and i've seen a few that have been a bit battered perhaps by past experiences so don't sort of come out of themselves much and you sort of go come on come on because it's not always like that you know I you can see you've got the values in there and you know you do you get you get different personalities don't you I think that's yeah, fair yeah. to say that's fair to say <laughs> well really I think go on sorry go on I was just gonna say it's um it's just fine Oh, a dental nurses never a job. And I think it's always, it isn't just a job. I mean, for me anyway, it's not just a job. It is a career and it's, you put in what you make it, but equally you can get 
you know, bogged down and you can get trodden on and you can feel really demoralised. And there's so many nurses I've been in touch with over the years and they're now, they're not in dentistry anymore. And I just think, you know what, had they found that right practice or that right team to work with, maybe they'd still be nursing. Because when I knew them, they were amazing. And I just oh. wish maybe it was a, a practice thing or a not the right, you know, not in the right team. And I think, oh, and I... Oh, I just, I love to see people doing stuff they love and they're passionate about and where they're happy. So, yeah, I'm all for that. Yeah, I'm 100%. And do you know what, Ray? you've just made me think of something. I met with um, a very dear uh, friend of mine this week and we haven't seen each other for a long time. Um, she's a fantastic nurse, as it happens. And she was talking to me about uh, a new member of staff, actually, that she had worked with previously, funny enough. And uh, they were reception no they were a nurse but they 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 joined the practice as a receptionist but she was probably or she is she's mid 50s quite possibly and the reason she moved from her practice being a dental nurse and had been a dental nurse for many many years is because one of the dentists that joined there made her life hell um my friend never told me why. I never asked why. Um, it was enough to say that this nurse who was, like I say, mid-50s and had been there for years um, did eventually leave and went to be um, a receptionist. But it's it's so bad. It was so bad for her that um, she has said that she, she doesn't want to go back into surgery. So she's happy to be on reception. But it was that bad. She, she doesn't want to go back into surgery. That's so... so it is it is but what i'm really pleased for her is that she's she's got out and she's still within dentistry because i i know of this person anyway so i mean her personality and her enthusiasm um will bring a lot to the role that she's taken on but as you say i mean there are some some fantastic um nurses tco support staff i mean we could we could stay all day talking about them there really really are so it's not to end on on a negative because there are some very very fantastically valued individual individuals in in dentistry and i think it's uh it's important to to remember that so anybody out there wanting to be a dental nurse don't be put off <laughs> don't be put off please we've been here for a long time and we love it don't we Kate? Yeah, it, absolutely, hundred percent. It's so rewarding, so rewarding. It really, really is. Let's end on that positive point. <laughs> really, thank you so much. Now, I hope you don't mind, but I wanted to say um, a personal congratulations to you. Um, we will be getting you back on the panel. You've already swore in blood to Shelley and I that you'll be coming back on. But a con huge congratulations! You. If you would share with everybody, you are moving on. Yes. So amazing. So I am still a dental nurse. I'm still a qualified nurse. But after 20 years in practice, I have decided to find a new adventure still within dentistry. So I'm going to go yeah. and work for the Strowman Group and be part of this team of Strowman in part in their orthodontic department at in a support level position. And I'm really excited. I'm also really nervous because <laughs> We've only ever known practice, loads of different people, oh. only ever in practice. So this is a really, they're taking a chance on me. Um, they can obviously see something which is really cool. Um, they can see something in me which is really exciting. So yeah, so I'll still be connected with my dentist because obviously we're a Strowman, we, we yeah. use Strowman products. So I know that I'll see you guys. Often you will This is a whole new world for me now. So a dental nurse yes. branching out into something different. So and yeah. And that's exactly it, though, Ree. When we've spoke about on our previous chats about what dental nurses can do, you know, what else they can do, what other qualifications, look at this. You know, being a dental nurse has, has opened another door for you. So we are going to be getting Rhea back. She's sworn it. So we'll have regular updates from her. <laughs> um, thank you very much. I can't wait. <laughs> Oh, bless you. Everybody out there, we hope you found this um, interesting. As we've said before, please get in contact. Um, Kate at HortonImplants.com. That will reach um, Shelley and I and obviously Ree when she joins us on the panel. Anything you want us to talk about, if you want to join us, please do. You'd be very, very welcome. Um, on that note, hope you all have a fantastic um, weekend. And Ree, thank you once again. Oh, no worries, Kate. Have an amazing weekend yourself as well. Say hello to Carl for me. Will do. Thank you, Ray. Bye.
Bye.